All right. Yes. Hello. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to stream. Ooh. How you feel about the new starting soon stream? I decided to... I, I changed the scroller. Hello. Hello. Um, I changed the scroller because, like, the original one didn't loop, per like, perfectly. And I was like, I should probably make a new one because it's bothering me. <laughs> Did I yell loud? I'm sorry. I'm pretty close to my mic. Um, but hello, welcome in, everyone. Welcome to stream. Um, I, I prepped a lot for this stream. I actually did. Crazy, right? That's incredible. Including, haha. How do we feel about that? There's a new little avatar in the corner. Um, and she'll move when I talk, which I think is kind of fun. I wanted to try something new. Um, but yes, so we are working with a couple new things today. Um, yeah, hold on. I was like, I prepared a lot. Me immediately gets caught up in what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> okay, though. Um, before we get going, though, we all kind of know the drill. Or we did know the drill. Um, because this is going to be a little bit different. Because if you didn't know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds. And we art nerds have to stick together. So if you are an art nerd too, if you are an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. And check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors. Because we're not just a YouTube channel, we are an art school too. See, if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content, consider supporting us on... Consider... Whoa. If you'd like to support us, we keep making free content. Consider supporting us by becoming a YouTube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. Yes, yes, a little bit different. A little bit different this time around. I'm losing the touch just because we changed it. <laughs> uh, hello, Oz. Welcome in. Um, but yes, before we actually get going with the illustration portions, we're going to start with the submissions this week because we have a whole new set of art submissions to do, um, because this week, um, or this month is character design. We've changed the theme up. Um, we, we got way more submissions than usual <laughs> this time around. Um, we change it every week. We change. We go through all the submissions week per week, so we get a whole new set. Um, and because there's been so many submissions, I decided to do ten this week. We have ten different arts today, ten different art pieces, um, and I actually have it set up so it's we actually have like a nice little <laughs> we have a nice little window. Um, so this character is named Krill from artist Aaron. I love this character. This character is crazy looking. I love like this. This krill lobster, I believe is what they said they were. It's a really, really cool design. I love the color palette. I love the anatomy. I'm a huge fan of like mermaidish people that are like not like standard fish. <laughs> I'm a really big fan of that sort of stuff. Um, so we have this one. Next one is by Jade. I cannot pronounce that username, but that's their username in the bottom left corner. Um, this is their shark OC. This character reminded me a lot of my water ganasi. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, I love this. Um, I'm a huge fan of blue, orange, brownish palettes as well. This is a really fun kind of character. I love sharks. As in, shark characters are just really fun. Um, great looking character. Um, really fun anatomy, really fun play on a, a very chibi-ish kind of art style. I'm a really big fan of it. Um, next one is by a person named King. Um, their character is named Stag. Again, I'm a really big fan of antlers. I love antlers. I love wooded characters. This sort of like shaggy character looks like they live in the woods. What a cool design. What a really cool design. The single horn with like the thin tail with the poof on the end. What a gorgeous design. And I'm a really big fan of like, I can't zoom in and out um, with this layout, but I love the palette. I love the anatomy. It's a really, really cool. I also love like the, the, the hair shapes. The shapes that they use for the hair. Really, really cool stuff. This is a great piece. This is a great character. Great looking character. I really want to play a druid. So it's like... This feels like what I want to do. Uh, Alright. Um, This character is by Lost Kid. Is there a necromancer named Faye? I want to play a necromancer. That's another character type I really want to play. Um, I love this anatomy. It's very, it's very reminiscent. This style as well. It's traditionally done um it's very reminiscent of like a lot of 
older like YouTube animations that I'd see when I was a kid. Um, and it's just it's it's really well done. Like I love the look of it. It's just super cool. I'm a really I'm a really big fan. I'm also just a sucker for pointed ears and fangs. Like it's just it's just a thing that <laughs> I really love to do to see. Um, next up, we have this character by Sunset Studios. There was no details given about this character. Um, I just love this pose. This pose is killer. The perspective is really great. Um, the anatomy on the leg, that leg pointing towards, like, I can't use, like, my mouse to point around, but that leg coming towards you, then, like, this pose is killer. The movement in this pose is awesome, and it's so bouncy. The forms are great. Beautiful, beautiful work. It's really, really nice. Really, really nicely done. This character by Chief Lame one two three one two three. Um, oh no, will I be able to pronounce his name? Jaya, Jaya. I'm real, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rendering. Um, they submitted something else in the Discord as well, and I felt bad. I was like, gosh, I would, I love that design, but like, I can't include it. <laughs> um, because it's just, it was a little bit too gory. Like, I don't care if when it's in the Discord, but like on YouTube, I have to be slightly more cautious. Um. This is a really cool design. Really bright colors, really great usage of a triadic color scheme, um, where it's like very much the three traditional primary colors. Really, really cool stuff. Um, really great looking piece. Really great looking character. Um, next up, we have this character by Emily. They submitted a few characters. This one just spoke to me. There was also another one that I think was like a water tiefling kind of character. Who I, I have a water tiefling character. Um, as in like, it's like a water ganasi tiefling. Um, but this character was like the full body and really spoke to me. I love pastel palettes, guys. I literally just changed my whole phone's layout to be pastel pink and blue. And like, it took me an hour and like it's so this is such a beautiful i'll always comment on the colors i'm a huge color person so like the the pastels blended with these like really bright like greens you can kind of see like these foresty greens with like the pastel pink blue and yellow it, it melds really really well um it's just a, it's a really cool like and then like the shape language is really nice it's very very like it's almost like a it's almost like an old god that's kind of what i what i get from this it's it's really cool it's a, it's a really nice and um interesting design i'm a really big fan of it this one is by uh vixie on the discord the character's name is portent acts as their online mascot in a way this line art is killer this line art is so sharp so clean really really nice simple design uh, this is a good example of like less is more really really great kind of like simple shape language really 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 well done and it's like you have like this overall like very dark blue palette with just that that little shimmer of of, uh, of red for the eyes inside the mouth and you have like little bits of white going throughout really really well balanced well done well done this character by picasso pigeon i think this is second last um this character by picasso pigeon their name is augustine this character's name a really nice simple design um they posted their before and after like the original design and then the um the one afterwards and like i i, I had to take a guess <laughs> which one was the newer one i was like um but it's a really cute design i'm a really big fan of, like the the pointed ears with like the little um design near the earlobe i do that a lot um and that was a lot of fun um and i'm like oh so reminiscent of my old characters <laughs> and like the very like sharp anatomy is something else that i do as well um really great another example of like simple is better less is more it's a really nice simple very very fitting for like let's say like an animation or a cartoon um really really well done um and i think there's one more yes this is the last one this one is by Milo Lolf. <laughs> Um, on the Discord, their character, their druid named Ellie. They also posted their dad, and I saw the dad, and I was like, nice. <laughs> but this is a really, really pretty design. Again, I love to play a druid. Um, and like, like light hair on darker skin is just like a like a flawless design trope. It's just like it's just good. It's it's a banger every time. Um, really, really pretty though. This image was so tiny, but like I had to include it. <laughs> They're really nice, like a very, very cottage core type character. Really, really well done. Really great stuff. Okay though. That's it for my little segment, I believe. Yes. Yeah. And then we're back to the beginning. Beautiful. So this will be changed out every single week. It'll be a different set of illustrations every single week. Um, so you'll be able to see that when that happens. 
But for the stream, what we are going to be doing, like the stream title suggests, is I'm going to be drawing linelessly, which literally just means that I'm going to be drawing a whole piece without using line art. It does not mean that I am not going to be using lines at all. <laughs> I have to draw. I have to draw a sketch, um, but I'm going to be working without line art. And y'all voted for something spookier, so guess what? We're drawing my warlock again. <laughs> You've been waiting for this stream for over a month? Good heavens. I apologize. Kingsley fan art for work. Listen, I can draw my own character as much as I want. <laughs> I'm going to be working in a more flat style. Just because I think that that one will be a little bit easier to complete. Did I go to art school or am I self-taught? I am majorly self-taught. I grew up in an artist's family. Um, so most of what I grew up with was just being surrounded by art. Currently, I go to art university. Uh, but my style, most of the things that I learned are like self-taught. I think the only things that like, like I taught myself digital art. I taught myself most of what I know. Um, the stuff that like I didn't teach myself is the very, very theoretical stuff. Um, so that that's like extreme color theory and like some like more scientific aspects of anatomy. Those ones I I was taught. Most other things though I taught myself, like how to stylize. Any tips for an eleven year old? Literally draw whatever you want. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like if you're just starting out with art, when I was eleven, I didn't worry about any of this stuff. Do whatever you want. I think that it's it's more important to grow a love for art first before you get into the harsh, um, what's it called? Like the harsh ways of learning and stuff like that. Extreme color theory. No, no, no. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have a. I think we already did a stream on like more advanced color um, schemes, didn't we? Or there's a there's a video on it for sure. I didn't even talk about like the si like more science behind like what's it called the more sciencey stuff behind color theory. I didn't even talk about Chevrolet's rule of color interaction. I could have gone on that about that for like ages. I love color theory. <laughs> Photoshop today. Um, is there any particular reason? Oh, well, it, it's it's more like we originally only worked in Medibang. But then eventually we started growing an audience where all of them wanted, a bunch of you wanted clips, some of you wanted Photoshop, so on and so forth. And I so happened to be able to use all three. So we just kind of switch it around to like, not have it like exclusive to one program so then people can see how my workflow is in each one. Photoshop is my program of choice. Um, and I figured that this stream would be a little bit more challenging on me. So I was like, I'll use my program of choice. So I'm not fighting with the program as much. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I wanna, well, it wasn't It wasn't just necessarily my choice. It was the choice of the studio. And we were all like, we were like, why don't we just like have it so we work in multiple different programs. So then it's like, um, you, a bunch of you guys can get what you want rather than just like catering to one. What's my favorite color scheme? I love cyan and red. Um, cyan and red is a complimentary uh, palette used mostly with like um, concept art in the CMY color wheel. Um, it's, de it's my favorite one. Like, I just, I love that aesthetic a lot. I also really love neon pink. Like, I love magenta with cyan. Like, that's another banger to me. <laughs> Blue and orange is a great one. Blue and orange is considered the concept artist's color scheme. If you will look up any, like, game that is rated T and above you will find its concept art and it will all be like blue and orange. If you look up like God of War concept art, it will all be blue and orange. Detroit Become Human concept art. <laughs> It'll all be blue and orange. Even the newest game, like Stray, Stray concept art. It'll be a lot of blue and orange. Every movie poster is blue and orange. But why? Good question. I think it's just because like blue and orange are just it's a very striking color combination it's like you have like the the accent color of orange that goes against blue it's a very nice one of the more natural complementary palettes as well so people tend to like to use it 
Purple and green's great. Navy blue, vibrant red. That's a good one too, yeah. Have I seen the Owl House? I have not. I have heard of it. I have a lot of friends who are really into the Owl House. I should save this file. <laughs> That's a good idea, me. Sixty-five. So I have a video on explaining color theory. I believe it's up. Like we have like one on like different palettes. We don't have one on like chevrolets. I don't know. Daria, do you know if we're gonna be making one about that? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I have seen Gravity Falls. I didn't finish it though. Should I have? Yes, I didn't have one. I need to look at my references for a sec because I have like a whole section where I just take my. Love the way that I draw hair. Any advice on it? My way of drawing hair is very much just like I find a flow that I want. Kingsley was not like his hair was not initially like this. It was very it was a lot more like like subtle by comparison to this. Now I've kind of grown into this very anime boy esque sort of hair, and I don't know why. <laughs> like he didn't have his hair initially like this, but then like as I got used to drawing him, he became more and more like this. But for me, I just end up finding a flow that I like. And if I and eventually, like, I'll just kind of... Like, there's, there's obviously, like, nuance to it. We did a hair stream a few weeks back. Um, or was that last week? I don't remember. I, I barely remember half the things that I do. Um... <laughs> What's my least favorite art style? You're opening up a can of worms here, buddy. <laughs> I am very particular about my art styles. Shoot, what is my least favorite? Like, I can't, I can't, like, hone in on, like, an art style that I don't really like. Like, it, like, it doesn't have a name. Like, I can name, like, some, like, franchises that I don't really like the art styles of. Obviously, whatever my opinion is, if it's different from yours, then, like, whatever. Like, we're entitled to our own opinions. I really don't like the art style of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't really like the style of The Promised Neverland. Um, I have, like, no rhyme or reason to my style likes and dislikes, by the way. Um, Seven Deadly Sins on Netflix. I don't really like the style of that one either. Um. <laughs> Alright, this one's, this one's gonna get me. I didn't really like the style of, um, Fire Emblem Awakening. <laughs> That's one that everybody hates me for. But yeah. <laughs> I have any advice for drawing backgrounds to be a future video stream? I We've had a few background streams, I believe. Um, I'd say just look up references, like a lot of them. Backgrounds are something like you have to feel for a background a lot of the times. You need to understand your perspective. Even if you're not, like, working with extreme perspective, you're going to want to understand it regardless. You might if, you're, if you sit here on your stream. Yeah, lurk, man. Feel free to lurk. What's the story behind this character? This is one of my D&D characters. His name is Kingsley. Um, Kingsley is my great old one warlock. Um, his pact is with a... Um, like this eldritch deity that he summoned one night because he was like for like for like fun like you know like if you when you're younger and you're with your friends and your friends are like hey let's play like let's play like bloody mary which is like if you don't know what that is it's like you go into a mirror and you say bloody mary three times and then bloody mary is supposed to like be summoned or whatever right and like that's basically what he did with his friends with this deity but then the deity actually showed up <laughs> And then all of his friends left, and he was like, okay, I'm just like, I mean, I was gonna summon you, so, like, here you are. Um, and he didn't make the pact right there. It was very much, like, the deity was kind of annoyed and left. Um, but then he kept on summoning it. Long story short, um... So they're married. <laughs> That's Kingsley's story. See, he's my, he's my warlock who was married to his patron. This big eldritch deity thing <laughs> yeah dnd &D, dungeons and dragons
you have any advice for drawing characters that aren't things that are necessarily considered living? What do you mean by that? I'm not really sure what you mean by that. <laughs> His pack does with a moldy sandwich. Nice. <laughs> D, D like from Stranger Things. D, D did not come from Stranger Things. D, D has been around since the 70s. It's a tabletop um, RPG. It's been around for a long, long time. Far before Stranger Things. Um, but it was popularized within the eyes of the the general public from, with Stranger Things. But yes, D, D is a real game. It's been around for decades. Is D and D like from Stranger Things? Anyways, I have now turned into Ash. <laughs> yeah, D and D is great. It's been around for a long, long time. Kingsley, absolute Chad. Kingsley's the sweetest man. He is the like. He is sunflower and like sunshine. The warlock, uh, are they? The deity, the Eldritch deity, doesn't really have a name. Like, it has a name, but, like, the, you, it's really hard to pronounce. So Kingsley was like, can I just call you Sunny? And that's just become the deity's name. So their name is Sunny. <laughs> but yeah, the pact is basically he decided to, like, he married the, the Eldritch deity. Which, like, I draw differently every single time. Let me clean this up a little bit, and then we'll get to the lineless portion. Opposites attract, yeah. Yeah, their name is Sunny. Because, like, what, what the joke was is that their, their like, name was going to sound kind of like Sun, or like Sunflower, and he was like, I'm going to name you Sunny. <laughs> That's a little bit easier. And then they adopted the name Sunny over time. Because I love the, like, I'm a really big, like, fan of writing romance. So, like, one of my favorite tropes is, like, big, scary, cold thing becomes softer because they meet softer character. Kingsley's got a lot going on. <laughs> Trying to start a D&D group? Nice. I met um, my best friend's friends. And then we all started playing D&D. &D. <laughs> That's basically how it went. How did I draw the hands and forearm for Kingsley? With this style in particular, this is considered my chibi style. This is considered my, like, quick style. I use really, really simplified shapes. I basically just use, like, rectangles throughout the entire style. Very, very similar to, um... My Life as a Teenage Robot, that one, very, very similar to that sort of style. There's a couple anime that use this style that I cannot name. Um, it's very, very, like, early 2000s um, character illustration is the best way that I can put it. Don't worry about what I'm doing just right now. I'm literally just cleaning up this sketch so that it's easier to work with with outlines later. So that I can do this a bit quicker. Where can I find D&D? &D? You have to get a group of friends and play it. <laughs> it's not like a video game. It's a it's a it's an RPG with how RPGs used to be played, which is you actually role play within the game. <laughs> Yeah, it's a tabletop RPG. What gender is this? Because I can't process anything. Kingsley is he, him. Sunny uses whatever pronouns you can think of. Some of my friends refer to Sunny as a she. I tend to use they, them. It literally does not matter. Sunny is a... Technically, Sunny is a formless entity who can become whatever they want. So it's not really like they're bound to any kind of form regardless. So it literally does not matter what uh, what pronouns you use for Sunny. Well, 
what is Kingsley in the D&D universe? He's just a dude. He's he's a human. I didn't want to do like, I wanted him to be the most normal guy. Like I remember saying that. I was like, oh, he's just a human. And my friends were like, you don't want to make him like, like a custom lineage. You don't want to make him. I was like, nope. <laughs> I want him to be just a baseline human. I want him to be boring. I don't want anything interesting with him. But Kingsley's a warlock if you're looking for his class. He's a... He's just a dude. Do I have D&D streams? No. I am... I don't stream D&D. I am part of a group that streams D&D, but I do not actually play live. <laughs> it was a cool. I would know I am one. Yes, same. I wouldn't say we're cool, but I'd say that we certainly exist. Yeah, we're probably not going to cut up this one. We're probably just going to leave it on here. If we do, I have the I have the recording. So like if we end up cutting this up into something like a speed paint. Any tips for being quick with your sketches? Try not to make them perfect. Your sketches are just there to give you a guideline. Use less lines. I tend to move really quick. Use like single strokes. Don't don't do this. This is called feathering. This makes you move a lot slower. It's usually easier if you just use single strokes for a lot of things. It's the same deal with line art. Like what I'm doing right now is just like filling in areas. Make it easier for me to track later on. I'm also designing this form on the spot. So <laughs> I'm kind of like... <laughs> Yeah, big proponent of human PCs and D&D. People rag on them too much, but I think they're fun. Exactly. There's something fun about having just a guy. <laughs> just playing a guy. Who am I drawing? This is my character, Kingsley. You'll see me calling him Lee a lot, because it's just easier to, to say Lee sometimes over the other than Kingsley. I don't even play in a campaign as Kingsley. Kingsley just so happened to be, like, my second character. Um, my first character, I don't know if I'll ever play him. Um, Caspian. But my my third character, Korn, is who I play as currently. He's my little dragonborn character. If cute character had won the poll, I would have drawn Korn. So, like, if you if you don't know, like, you know, every week here on the channel, you should subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We do, like, a, we do a poll every week um, to see what I'm going to draw for the stream. Um, and you guys wanted a spookier characters so i decided on kingsley and sunny um because they are a spookier couple um but if cute character had won then i would have drawn corn and corn is my current character that i play as who's a dragonborn barbarian yeah whenever i make sketches i always obsess over making them perfect yeah no don't don't clean up the sketch too much like this is about as much as i'm going to clean up the sketch i could have left it at this but um <clears throat> the cleanup section would have taken a lot longer so i'm like i'll probably just so i figured i should probably make this section a little bit more concrete so then i know what i'm doing when we get to the lineless portion at the very least corn snake no 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 K corn is a dragonborn barbarian he's a he's eight years old he's not very smart he does his best Kingsley looks like your friendly neighborhood guy. Basically, <laughs> Kingsley is the definition of just a guy. <laughs> Corin, yeah, Corin. Corin is super fun to play as because it's like he's not that smart, so I can just kind of like. I can say dumb things, and it's like, yeah, that's just his character. Like, he won't know that. <laughs> he wouldn't know that. But it also sucks because I can't really, like, theorize with the other players because, like, my character would not do that. I have a soft spot for dumb characters. Me too. Why'd you decide on the name Corn? It's a terrific name. Okay, so funny story. I was sitting there. Um, one of my friends approached me and he was like, Hey, Jess, you want to play in this campaign that I'm planning? It's a Taldori campaign. And I was like, yeah, man, sure. Um, and... I sat there and I was like, so what What should I play as? And he's like, you could just play as anything. We've got pretty well, like... He's like, just play as anything, because nobody's really, like, set on anything that they want to play yet. Um, so I decided on, like, being, like, frontline. Like, a, 
I became the tank, um, but I decided on being, like, frontline. Um, and I... <laughs> I sat there and I was like, you know what? I kind of want to play a Dragonborn. Like, why not? Let's let's play a Dragonborn. Let's play somebody a bit like heftier. And my friend suggested play my friend other friends suggested playing a barbarian. Because it's like a nice and easy class if you've never played DD before. So I was like, okay, I'll play as I'll play as a barbarian. So I play Totem of the Bear. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I don't really know what to to name him. I don't really have inspiration for this character. And I sat there and my brain was like, you're gonna name him Corn. And I was like, why? Am I, I'm like, what do you mean you're gonna, I'm gonna name him Corn? And my brain's like, you're gonna name him Corn. I have no explanation for why, but you're gonna name him Corn. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So like, and then I couldn't get it out of my brain. So then I just, I named him Corn. And then the rest of my brain was like, okay, but have his last name be Chip. And I was like, but why? Why would I name him Corn Chip? And they're like, and my brain was like, you gotta do it. And I was like, okay, I guess my character's name is Corn Chip. <laughs> And yeah, yeah, Corn Chip. So his full name is Corn Chip. Corn Chip. It's like that. That's how you spell his name. He's a black dragon. Black dragonborn. Um, he was originally going to be like like a brown, because I was like, I kind of wanted to base his design off of the Thorny Toad. If you've never seen those before, it's like a really cool lizard that exists. Um, but then, like, they didn't have, like, the option for the color that I wanted in the drop. Like, there's no yellow dragon. So I was like, okay, I guess I will go with. And I had to sit there for a second. And then I remembered the meme of, like, I would sell your soul for one corn chip. And I was like, that's it. That's the one. I'm going to base him off of a raven. <laughs> like, the raven <laughs> in that meme. Duh. Yeah, no, Corn. Corn is a lot of fun to play as. I, I have to put on a voice for Corn as well because he's a little boy. I haven't done it in like a long time. Oh. Yeah, the Thorny Toad is a lizard. I don't know why it's called the Thorny Toad when it's a lizard. You can't ask me. You can't berate me for, <laughs> for calling it that. That's just literally its name. Um, I haven't done the Corn voice in a while because like we haven't played in a while because we haven't had the. Wait, no. Did we play this Sunday? It's still been a while. <laughs> can I do the voice? Yeah, I can do the voice. When I talk like corn, I have to like use like my I have to talk from like my nose and I have to kind of force out this gravelier voice. So that's like how I that that tends to be how I like, you know, talk like corn. Um so corn's voice is very very different. Yeah, it caught me off guard, right? I remember when I pulled out the corn voice and they were like, "What do you mean that's how you're talking for him?" <laughs> He's a gremlin. Oh no, corn is a gremlin. Corn is a gremlin child. Hang on, I have art of corn lying around, don't I? I of course I have art of corn lying around. Is there a recent one? Yes, there is. Hang on, I drew him with uh, our. I drew him with our ranger. Hang on, recently for a class. We did a class demo. Check out the classes if you didn't know we teach classes. Exclamation point classes. Um. I drew him for a demo recently. This is our ranger, our Eldrin elf ranger Pierce. This is Corn. So Corn is a little dragonborn. See, he's like, he's our little. This this is the character that I play. This little boy, but um, Pierce is our dragonborn ranger, six foot. F or no, he is a Eldrin elf Drake warden ranger. <laughs> See, he has a dragon pet named Puddles. Um, Pierce is played by a friend of mine. Um, Scarecrow sketch on twitch.tv but yeah corn is very sweet corn's a very cute little boy he's got that bit but he's a barbarian so when he rages he looks a little bit different where is where is that stream when did i do that stream i drew like one of the yeah there's corn when he he's got a lot of teeth my boy's got a lot of teeth this is his cannon outfit and that's his axe he has. I love drawing corn. Corn is so easy to draw. Just as a reminder to people who are just popping in, these this is not my line art. This is still my sketch. Uh, like I haven't gotten to the complete completion portion yet. I'm just cleaning the sketch up so that it is easier to get to the completion portion. Because <laughs> I so happen to decide to choose a. I decided to try and design something on the spot. 
on a stream that would have already been kind of difficult. So, <laughs> you know. My brother's D&D character is a three-foot gremlin named Cryptid that sits on my friend's shoulder. That's incredible. I can't handle the fact that it looks like teeth. Oh, like actual corn? Yeah. No. I've been sitting here this whole time, haven't realized this is still the sketch. Oh yeah, no, this is still my sketching phase. This is far too messy to be an actual line art. A lot of the areas aren't completed. It's just like a, it's a nice rough thing to get me to figure out what I'm doing. Yeah, don't mind me, because I still need to kind of decide on what's happening here. Whoops. <laughs> I love your line sketch or not, they're so smooth, I want to do that. Um, smoothness with your sketches comes with just using less lines. Like, people tend to spend, like, tend to move way too slow when they sketch, or they tend to move way too slow when they line, and it usually comes out very wobbly. It's like riding a bicycle. The faster that you go, the better your lines look. Still be smoother. I do still have to tone Sunny down for for streams. Like Sunny is meant to be this kind of big eldritch crazy looking thing, but I still tone it down a little bit. Alright, now we can get to the lightless portion. <laughs> This is gonna be the guides. And we can do our first pass of color. The fun thing about working linelessly for me is that I have to use a lot of layers when I work linelessly like this. So it's a different process of working. What if I drew corn eating corn? I've been asked to do that before, actually, by my actual by my friends. And I sat there and I'm like, maybe one day. Corn eats everything. That's that's another thing with with corn is that he'll just like chew and bite on everything because he's like a little kid. It's like a shark. It's like you know they're like curious, so they like instead of like smelling something, they like test stuff out by like biting it. It's like that. There was a section recently when we played, um, and our, our, uh, tabaxi wizard named Scribbles was, like, he's taking us around his, uh, his hometown, and we wanted, like, and we saw, like, street food vendors, and he's like, no, you probably shouldn't eat anything, because, like, if you eat something now, then you won't have any room left for when we get back to my place and get cooking, and, like, like, actually eat something, and I was like, as Corrin, I was like, says you, <laughs> Like, there's- my- my boy is an endless pit. He will be just fine. Scribbles. Yeah, Scribbles. Scribbles is our tabaxi. Um, tabaxi wizard. He looks like this. It's- it's very easy to draw Scribbles. It's just like- hang on, no, I should draw the hat first. It's like, you have the hat that has two ears like that. And then the markings like this. And he's got like a little wizard's robe. He's got, like, paws and a big fluffy tail. <laughs> That's Scribbles. Scribbles is really easy to draw. I, I still need to swatch all the characters, though. I love my voice. Thank you. Wizard cat. He's a very- he's- yeah, he's a- he's a wizard bard. The small little paws. Yeah, instead of Scribbles, we all call him Squibbles. <laughs> we say Squibbles instead of Scribbles. Ralsei Teltarun? Nah. If you want a character that looks like Ralsei- No, wait, my recent- my paladin that I just designed, Cliff, um, somebody commented and said that he kind of reminded them of Asgore, and that is so the- like, he's a satyr. So I was like, that is so the vibe that I wanted, which is like, perfect. Squibbles, yeah. 
multiple tabaxi characters. Never knew they were called tabaxis until about a week ago. Yeah, tabaxi is a it's a D and D thing. It's not necessarily like like a cat character is not necessarily a tabaxi, but like a tabaxi is from that's from a D and D. What house do you think corn would be for Harry Potter? Hufflepuff. Have I ever played Gardic? Yes, I have. I've played Gardic for streams before. Um, I love playing Gardic on streams. <laughs> I watch I watch uh, Rubber Ross play it a lot, so like I'm very used to the to the speed and how to handle the program. Also asked where his Toriel was. Yeah, no, he has a no. Well, I mean, he was divorced, but he's divorced to, a, to his husband, so it's not quite Toriel. <laughs> think I would be a Slytherin. Last time I took the quiz, I was a Ravenclaw. So <laughs> it was like, I took a, I took a version of the quiz that was like, it took all the answers from like Pottermore and like switched it up. So like you get every single question. It was like, I was like, oh shoot, what was it? It was like, I was like 50% like Ravenclaw, 50% Slytherin. Like not exactly, but I was very close to that. And then I just had a little bit of like Hufflepuff <laughs> and Gryffindor in there. <clears throat> Asgore, yeah, yeah. Um, Cliff, he kind of. Last time I talked about him, everyone was like, he looks like he looks like Asgore. Hang on, let me let me find him. Here's Cliff. Cliff Conrose. He's my uh, he's my paladin. Designing Cliff was really fun. He's the sweetest Southern man, six foot eight. <laughs> I had a lot of fun designing this armor, actually. I was like, I'm really bad with rendering metal, so it was just a nice test of my skills. Howdy, yeah. Uh... Did you do the thing where I got your spirit animal? You got salmon, did you? I got a Pegasus. Can you play the violin? No. I do pick and choose which of my characters are really good at the arts. Kingsley has a really nice voice. I've said like he can sing very well. Corn can't do anything. Corn, Corn will do his best, but he's not. He's not very good at anything art related. <laughs> do I do anything other than art? I was once a music. <laughs> I was once a music student, um, so I did vocals a lot. I was a vocalist for a while. Um, I played piano and flute very frequently. I still sing for fun, but I don't really. I don't really do it much. Like I don't I don't perform anymore. That's basically my thing. Um I want to get back into sculpting. I love writing. I'm a big writer. Did you say no lines? Yeah, yeah. These that's my sketch. So I'm using my sketch as a guideline. Once I get rid of the guideline, it'll look like this. So it'll have like no lines on the middle. This right now is just so that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> when I work linelessly, if I'm working in a more vectored style, I have guidelines for me first. And that makes it easier for me to see what's happening by comparison to if I just went straight in. Linelessly also does not necessarily mean painted. I wasn't planning on painting for the stream. When I hear linelessly, I think of like more vectored illustrations. And even for when I work with vectors, I have a sketch pass first. I talk about this every stream. Every stream, somebody asks me if I like Wings of Fire. Last time I read Wings of Fire um, was when there were only five books out. And I thought that it was going to end after the fifth book. Like, I read the fifth book and I was like, oh, that's a really nice conclusion. I guess, like, I'm done with the series. And I thought that's when it ended. And then one of my students was like, Jesse, did you read Wings of Fire? And I was like, yeah, I did. I loved that series when I was a kid. And she was like, cool. And she's like, I just finished book 12. And I was like, book 12? I'm like, what do you mean book 12? And she's like, yeah, there's like, there's a bunch of books out. I'm kind of behind. And I looked it up and there's so many more. And I'm like, what do you mean it didn't end after book five? Book five ended, it was, it was so succinct. I don't think, I didn't think it needed anything else. Like, it, like it could have just stopped there and I had no clue that it just kept going. And now I'm too lazy to keep reading because I don't care enough. <laughs> 
Do you have a job specifically for art? Do you do still have art as a hobby besides teaching? Yeah, of course. Art is literally my life. So I am a teacher for Wing Canvas. So here at Wing Canvas, I am the I am um, one of the streamers. We're gonna have a couple more coming on soon. Um, I'm like the main streamer, I guess. Um, and I'm also one of the instructors. Um, and I do some design work on here. I write the blogs, so on and so forth. I do commission work on the side. I do a lot of um, freelance just for myself. Um, I work for a lot of streamers. Um, I do a lot of design work. I design a lot of my friends' D&D characters. That's a thing that I do a lot. Um, is usually like, oh, it's like, hey Jess, I need like a D&D character designed. I'm like, I got you. And that tends to be what I do as well. Um, and then I... Also, I'm one of the designers for a D&D show, so I, I design a lot of characters for a different D&D show. Um, but yeah, I do. And then I obviously I do art on the side just for fun. Like I, I just I, art drawing is literally just my life. Like it's like <laughs> I have like there's always the art meme of like, yeah, I'm an artist. Yeah, I never draw. No, you it's rare that you'll catch me not drawing. <laughs> It's like I draw all the time. I live and breathe this stuff. I'm an art student as well. Like I go to university for art. Do I love Vox Machina? Of course I know Vox Machina. We're playing in Tal'Dorei. We're playing in an Exandria continent. Um, have I watched Vox Machina? No. <laughs> Should I watch it? Yeah, probably eventually. <laughs> I will eventually. I don't know when though. Do I take commissions? Currently, they're not open for the public. My commissions are always open for friends, but not necessarily for people outside. If you guys want me to let you know when my commissions are open, I can. I can post them in, I, like, self-promo when that happens. Um, but currently, my commissions are closed for the public. I am planning on opening up them up soon, though. How do I deal with art block? That's the funny thing is that I very rarely get art block. I got it recently, um, which was like a first for me. Like I sat there and I had no desire to draw and I had no ideas. And I was like, whoa. Cause like, I never really feel that. Um, my biggest piece of advice is just to not draw, just to sit there and like do something else. Like, which is like the advice that I was given. And like, I'm like, and it worked. Like I, I had art block for maybe like, <laughs> my friends were like this was not art block um i had art block for maybe like five hours and then like i got back into it and i was like okay i'm good now um <laughs> but like usually it's like you just need a break like you need extra hobbies other than art like i i oh i said like i live and breathe art but you do need extra hobbies other than art pain <laughs> that's valid k welcome in by the way You never stop growing as an artist. Very, very true. I learn new things every day. Have I ever heard of Popcross Studios? I have not. What program am I using? This is Photoshop CC. Um, we change programs every week, though. Are we? Yeah, we change programs every week. So next week will probably be in Clip Studio Paint by comparison to um, Photoshop because the week before was Medibank. We cycle through those three just to have a variety of programs that we can use. Have I ever seen Owl House? I have not. Hi, hello Trenton. Thank you for the two dollars. Hope you're doing well. I learned something new today. I learned that D&D is not from Stranger Things. Yes, D&D is not from Stranger Things. Have I heard about Lavender Town? I have. Lavender Town was not an artist that I grew up with, though find it so cool you genuinely talk to your audience an amazing artist thank you watch a lot of your videos they help me a lot i appreciate it it's not just me i'm just the person that you see in front of the camera the most most of the time we have a lot of people in the studio we have lovely dorian who is our main editor daria who you'll see popping up in chat lovely mod who also does all the thumbnail designs or a good a good majority <laughs> of the thumbnail designs plans the streams does a lot of social media management everybody say thank you daria um, Faye, our lovely, um, boss, who oversees all of this, Geo, head manager, head admin. We got a lot of people on the team. 
I just so happen to be the one that's in front of the camera. We're going to be getting on a couple other people soon as well. We're going to have um, Iggy and Vanessa, who will be streaming soon as well. They'll be taking over. Um, I won't be here for a couple weeks. I'm just letting you know about that ahead of time. On the 26th and the 2nd, I will not be streaming. It will be Iggy and Vanessa. Um, so they will be taking over for me for those couple of weeks. Um, and then they'll be here to stay, I believe, for a while. But I think we're going to do a, a proper introduction of them later on down the line. Yeah, we're starting to, we're planning to stream twice coming up. Not with me. We're going to have other people. Um, I am going to be still streaming on Fridays, but it'll be uh, Iggy and Vanessa tag teaming on Sunday. So we'll be having a second stream. Those streams will be going on for a bit shorter. So it'll be a little bit different. I think hearing the thing about D&D and Stranger Things is the first time in my life I've ever felt old. You and Oz felt the like said like very similar things, Kay. You were Oz was like, I think I felt myself turn to ash. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the sketch. We're just the sketch right now. What's my favorite topic to talk about? My own characters. <laughs> Ask me anything about my own characters and I will go off. I talked about, like, Kingsley and Corn for so long, dude. I love my characters. What's my webtoon about that I haven't updated since January? Um, Say Hello Grayson is a comic about a little kid moves to a new town and accidentally gets possessed by a demon. That's the gist of it. <laughs> and he learns to live with that. Do I have any villain characters? Not really. I don't like when I write antagonists, I don't really like to write like pure villains. So it's like I have more antagonistic characters. Yes. I haven't ha written any for D&D &D, though. If I I can't talk about the like I'm pr I'm planning on continuing Grayson so like I can't really talk about the antagonistic characters that are in there because they haven't shown up yet, um but yes. Normal day in the world yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to say hello to Grayson where the heck is he? But do I still I should remember how to draw Grayson right? It's right here. Okay, at the very least, I still remember how to draw Craig <laughs> to an extent. There's my boy. Great. <laughs> he lives in a small town in somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Canada. It's called Maple View, I believe is what I called it. Maple Crater? Maple... Maple something. What shows have I watched? I've watched a lot. I don't really watch much like i don't i haven't watched a lot recently i'm not really a big like show person what are my pronouns she her her designs are so cute thank you hello grayson it has indeed been about an hour <laughs> just a normal day oh look at that hands coming out of my mouth true who's my favorite character like of my own characters or like externally if we're talking about, like, fan character, my favorite character is Kirby. I'm pretty sure, like, most people who have been here long enough know that my favorite character of all time is Kirby. I, I basically live and breathe Kirby. Like, that's just how I live. Who's my favorite to draw currently? Like, I have, like... Okay. Because, like, I have, like, like all my D&D characters are my favorites to draw right now. I live and breathe a lot of things. True. So true. Is my hair like that in real life or was it just a persona? My hair used to be like that in real life. Um, as of right now, my hair is like... I have peekaboo hair. So like underneath my my normal hair is the dye. Um, but my hair was like that at one point. It's just like now my hair dye is different. Um, I'm going to change it again. I'm going to have like the front bang thing soon. Um, but it used to be. It is no longer like that though. Drawing Kirby is so fun. True. I have so much Kirby everywhere. I live in Canada. Do you genuinely think we live in igloos? I am also uh, true north strong and free, my friend. 
our studio here, Wayne Canvas, we are based in Canada. We're based in Ontario. So do not worry. I understand. What's my favorite Gravity Falls episode? Good question. I think my favorite... Shoot, what was my favorite one? I really liked one of the first ones where they went to the convenience store and like it was like no teenagers allowed and he was like tw it was like i'm actually 12 and they're like oh why didn't you say so we love kids like that's so funny um i really love the halloween special the one where it was like our summer ween and we remember that like the summer ween that episode was really great Do you know how to stop imposter syndrome or my art style is always compared to others? My favorite mantra to give myself is I'm not the best, I'm not the worst, um, and, but I'm learning every day, right? I don't think I'm the best, nor do I think that I'm the worst, right? I'm always improving though. Every artist is improving. It's better not to compare yourself to other artists because their journey is most likely different from yours. Their brain probably works different from yours. Doesn't necessarily, one of the biggest pieces that people used to do was like, oh, they have, they've they been drawing for longer than you. Not necessarily always true all the time, but their brains might work different than yours. They may have more hours of experience. They may draw more frequently. They may have more resources, whatever, right? It's, it's, it's not like, it's not something you should compare regardless, right? I tend to always see like younger artists. If I see a younger artist who is better than me, I get really excited. I'm like, yes, this means that the new generation of artists is gonna be like amazing, dude, right? It's gonna be great. It's gonna be incredible. Um, so like, I always get excited when I see younger artists who are like way better than me. I had a student once who was like, this kid, he could paint, man. Like he, he was amazing at digital backgrounds, right? And like every time that I'd see one of his, he was like, I remember he would always be like, Jesse, like, I don't think I'll ever reach, like, the level of you. I don't think he realized that he was better than me already. <laughs> like, every time that I taught him, it was, he was like, he's like, Jesse, I want to, like, get better than you at one point. And I'm like, I, I never told him, but I was like, I don't think you realize that you're better than me already. I taught him first in summer camp, and then he became a regular student. It was great. Yeah, no line art, not no sketch. Have I seen Amphibia? No, I have not. Out of all of, like, the really popular, like, Cartoon Network cartoons that are out right now, or Disney cartoons that are out right now, Amphibia is the one that I think I've seen the least about. I've seen a lot about the Owl House, I've seen a lot about Gravity Falls, but, like, Gravity Falls ended a while ago. Um, but Amphibia is the one that I've seen the least about, which I think is really interesting. But I hear a lot of people talk about it. Like, people, like, go, like, Amphibia's so good. And, like, I know nothing about it. I know there was, like, a, there was, like, a Grunkle Stan cameo at one point. <laughs> that happened recently. Have I seen glitch text? No, I have not. Do I have a favorite thing to draw? Yeah. I love drawing teeth. <laughs> it's not a joke, by the way. I really love drawing teeth. Most, like, some of my favorites, like, I love drawing horror. I love drawing monsters. I'm a really big fan of characters. Character art. That kind of thing. But I love drawing teeth. Teeth is, like, something that I'm, like, I love teeth. I love bones. I love drawing that kind of stuff. It's always fun for me. Have I ever been to NY? I have not. What's the color of my toothbrush? Black? <laughs> Do I use a computer? Yeah, I'm on my PC. Exclamation point device, if you want what I'm using. Let's turn down the guides a lot. And let's lock this. So now we can get going on. Oh, I missed a section here. No, I don't want the history. We. <laughs> we. <laughs> Do you think you'll change your art style or interest like three to ten years in the long run? Oh yeah, yeah, no, my my interests change like the weather. I <clears throat> for a, for a while I got really popular on Twitter because I was a Hunter Hunter artist, like the anime. Um, I haven't drawn Hunter Hunter since like early 2021. 
<clears throat> and I got into D&D &D like last year. Like it's not even like a recent thing. Or it, is, or it is a super recent thing. It's not even like a thing that's been around for a really long time. Where is this? Where is this eye color? He said there it is. Yeah. Working mindlessly like this is pretty tough. It's like a thing where I'm like, I have to focus a lot more, I think. <laughs> Do I draw with a mouse? No, no, no. I, I have a Cintiq. Goodness, no. <laughs> I've drawn with a mouse before. Um, I'll never do it again, but I have. Mostly for like a challenge to myself to see how it would go and I, I hated it. So I will not be doing that again. Um, no, it will not be a stream upcoming. What's a very common trait in my art? As of late, uh, men with glasses. <laughs> that tends to be a thing I do a lot. Yep, exclamation point device, if you ever wanted to know what I'm using. That's the thing that I see all the time blur, when they go like, oh, my art style changes every single day. I find that, like, it doesn't. When I see a lot of young artists, they go like, my art style changes all the time, and I look at their work, and I can still always tell that it's them who's been working with it, you know? I feel like it's just minuscule things that people think that are like really large things that are changing with their art. And it's not that it's like your art style is changing every single time. It's more so like you're just learning to adapt to something new. That's how I've always seen it anyway. Are you the only one who can never find the line of action? I'm gonna be totally 100% honest with you guys right it is rare that i ever use the line of action when i pose something like I, I i never grew up using the line of action i never used it a lot like is it good to use absolutely but i was never the type to use it like i just like yep it's there it exists am i gonna use it uh <laughs> you know it was just something that i knew that i had access to and that was present in my art but I just never grew up using it. Like, I never learned to pose with it. Or that was just not how I learned to pose with it. Now I do it when I'm doing, like, proper gesture illustration. Like, if I am working with, like, let's say I'm in, like, a class. And I needed to, like, you know, actually do, like, a gesture illustration. Then, yeah, sure, I will. But it's just not something that I do very frequently within my own art. Not anymore, anyway. What would be your biggest tip to artists trying to find their style? I would recommend that you see what you're interested in, what you're inspired by. And usually your style will come from that. You'll notice that the things that you enjoy will be present within like style, like your like things that you enjoy, their style will be present in stuff that you enjoy, right? Or the stuff that you enjoy, its style will be present in your own artwork, right? I always say like, like I remember when I really wanted to get out of the anime style for a while in high school, so I just stopped watching anime. And then like my style slowly became a little bit more Western. Or again, this, it came a kind of weird, kind of like Japanese Western mishmash. I find that I, I'm inspired by both now. Like, I, I take inspiration from both. Um, or it's like I have a weird, like, mishmash of both the West and, like, the East in my, uh, in my art style. Um, like, I love working in semi-realism. That tends to be a thing that I do a lot. Um, but yeah. Absorb what you want. Change your interests. Or make sure that your interests align. Do I have any specific artists that inspire you? Yes. I love Nadia Kim. She's my favorite painter. Stephen McGowan is my favorite in terms of just anatomy. Um, Junji Ito, I really love. I really love... Um, shoot, I can't say my favorite manga artist. Um, 
yeah, I've got I've got lots of artists. I have like a whole like I guess it's just like whoever I follow on Twitter. <laughs> it's who my favorites are. Um There's a really cool um there's a really cool artist that I follow on Twitter is like a really good um character artist. I love their work. I can never pronounce their name though. Will I ever do a stream with Krita? I'm actually not a really big fan of Krita, so probably not, no. What style is this? Um, I wouldn't, I don't know. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't name it anything. Um, I was trying to work in a way that's like, very similar to like an early 2000s cartoon, I think. Some people would call this vectored. Um... I'm taking inspiration from stuff like, um, again, like very early 2000s cartoons is kind of what I was thinking of when I work with, when I'm working with this. Have I ever heard of Coolin? I have not. My line of style is gorgeous. Thank you. This is a style that I, that I adapted when I was in high school. And then I've just never changed it since. Like, I've just been like, because I don't work in it often enough to, like, develop it. And it's, like, simple enough to a point where it's like, eh, I don't really need to worry about <laughs> developing it. Did I have bigger dreams when I was younger than what you achieved today? Um, I feel like my dreams were different. I think it was very much like, I didn't think I would be teaching. I didn't think that I would, like, enjoy teaching as much as I did. I didn't think I would go into comics, funny enough. Um, when I was younger, I really wanted to go into video games. Um, but that's where my first college was. Um, like, I went to video I went to college for video game art um, initially, until I changed to go for illustration. Um, I never thought that I could do comics when I was younger. Mostly just because I had never stuck with one. Like, I was always like, I don't really want to stick with like, I was never able to keep up with one. And then I learned that I could. I just, I needed to be more vigilant, basically. Um, so I did for a while. And I'd like to do them again. I just haven't had the time. <laughs> I've been kind of busy with everything else as of late. I love the silhouette of Sunny. It looks very menacingly compared to compared to Kingsley. Thank you. I, I love designing everything for Sunny. Every form of Sunny that I've gotten to draw has just been, like, crazy fun. There's a reason one that I did that I still really love. Hang on. Sunny is just so fun to draw all the time. There's this sketch that I did recently of Sunny and Kingsley. That was a lot of fun to do. I just really wanted to draw a spine and it spiraled into this. And I had like a lot of fun working on this one. This is my normal art style, by the way, if you wanted to see how I generally draw most of the time. Um, I spent way too long on this sketch. <laughs> I spent way too long on it. Um, but yeah, I love drawing Sunny. I love coming up with funkier ways that Sunny looks. Um, Sunny's usually huge. Sunny is usually very large like this. Um, but Sunny can be, like, any form that they want, so it doesn't really matter <laughs> most of the time. Summer Realism is the bomb. It is. It's like, when I was younger, I really wanted, like, a pure anime style. And then as I got old, like, I was very much one of those people that was like, I hate realism. Realism is a thing that I never want to do and I never want to touch it. And as I got older, I was like, I actually kind of want to implement realism into my style. <laughs> And I grew to love semi-realism, and that's just a thing that I've worked with for a while now. I've just, like, slowly trying to get better. Try been trying to get better at, basically. How many years have I dedicated to drawing? I came out the womb with pencil in hand. Um, approximately 21 years. <laughs> I make that joke like I was just born drawing. Um, it's, it's, it's not too far off. I have been drawing for my whole life. Um, but I started taking drawing really seriously. I want to say I was like 13, 12 when I started taking drawing really seriously. So it's been about eight, nine years. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> popped out the womb drawing Mozart, basically. How long did it take you to master hands? I focused on hands for a few months, and then I got really comfortable with them. Feet took a little bit longer, but hands took me a few months to get, like, to a point where I was really, really, uh, really comfortable with them. My biggest piece of advice for hands is draw in your nails, please. I promise you. <laughs> Your nails will help so much when drawing hands. <laughs> Thanks, Ken. <laughs> What's my favorite early 2000s cartoon? Ben 10, the original one. Ben 10 was my fit was my whole thing when I was a kid. I loved Ben 10. I had a Ben 10 birthday cake when I was like 8. Like it looked like the the watch. That was, like, my whole thing. I have a friend now who is, like, he knows everything about Ben 10. And, like, I love Ben 10, but I don't know that much about Ben 10. <laughs> so I was, like, so, like, I said, like, oh, yeah, no, I love Ben 10. And he was, like, dude, I know, like, all the lore about Ben 10. And he went off. And I was so impressed. <laughs> I was, like, wow, okay. It's that in Adventure Time. He knows, like, the lore about, like, Adventure Time all the time. Where is Crow? Sometimes he pops in. He's not here today, but I guess. Totally Spies for real, Daria. Totally Spies was also, like, my everything. I love Totally Spies. Loved uh, Johnny Test. Um, yeah. Definitely all that kind of stuff. How many kind of animes did I watch? How many anime did I enjoy? I watched a lot of anime when I was younger. I don't really watch it as much anymore. Um, when I was younger, I watched pretty much, like, every, like, mainstream. Or I watched a lot of mainstream anime. There wasn't anything, like, too obscure. I think the most obscure anime that I watched... I watched, like, two. There was one that was, like, um... The Circumstances of My Apartment's Bathtub, something like that. It was, like, this guy who finds, like, a merman in a river and just lets him live in the bathtub. There was, like, four episodes, I think. That's one of them. And then, um, Cute High Earth Defense Club Love. That's the other one that I watched. Think of magical girls, but there are no women in this show. It's literally all men. That is the, that's what Cute High Earth Defense Club Love is. It's, it's, it's magical boys. That's the, the whole show. <laughs> I, I'm not even exaggerating. That is the entire show. They tried so hard to make it so there were no women in that show. It is the wildest thing. Oh, it's not line art. It's just detailing. Don't worry about it. There's no lines on the outside. <laughs> there needs to be some, there needs to be some detailing. If there isn't, then you won't be able to see anything. Actually, I could just do this for this arm. Yeah, that works. Let's just keep it like this then. Oh man, no women. Yeah, no, it was it was a it was a ride. That show was so much. There's 14 episodes. I recommend it. It is the dumbest anime I've ever watched. <laughs> it was like if you took free Iwatobi Swim Club and then like turned it up to 11. That's basically how I would describe that show, which I also watched free. Great anime. Cannot recommend it enough. <laughs> What I miss? Nothing. We're talking about a uh, cute high earth defense club love, the uh, the best anime of all time. <laughs> Any tips for drawing clothes? Uh, study a lot of fashion types. Um, I love drawing all kinds of fashion. Um, learn fashion names. Learn fabric names. Um, understand what you're interested. Understand aesthetics that you enjoy. Stuff like that. What do I like the most, traditional or digital? I love them both. Um, I think, like, as, as time has gone on, I prefer digital. Um, but I love working in both. I have to work traditionally soon, actually. I need a new thing for my phone. I need a new illustration for the back of my phone. 
Do I have any pets? Yes, I have a bird named Medley. She hates my phone, so I never take it near her. <laughs> she also just kind of hates everything, so I don't. <laughs> I... <laughs> How am I so good at drawing circles? If you notice, my smoothing has been turned up to like 36. <laughs> just to draw the glass it's in. <laughs> Have I seen these stars? I have not. Go on my knees. I try and fix that a little bit. There we go. Is this clip? No, this is Photoshop. I always draw with most no smoothing. I've been working with no smoothing for this whole um, process. I just needed it for that one section. Because <laughs> I cannot draw circles. Use whatever tools are available to you, my friends. If smoothing is available to you, then use it. What countries have I been to? I have never been outside of the, the Americas, so I've never been outside of North America. Or just America in general. Like, I, the farthest I've gone outside of my country is the Dominican Republic. I have been across Canada, as in I've been in, like, here. Like, I've been to Quebec, and I live in Ontario. And then I have been to British Columbia. <laughs> and that's about it. I love BC. BC is beautiful. All my lovely British Columbian uh, Canadians out there. I love BC. North America, my favorite country. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, like, I've never been outside of North America, the continent. <laughs> like, the continent. The Americas. The West. I wish I was in BC. BC is beautiful. What are my favorite animals? My favorite animal is the fennec fox, followed very closely behind by the leafy sea dragon. I need this. Keep this locked, please. Thank you. You'll find very quickly that I'm very bad with geography. <laughs> Have I seen Uncharted? No. I've been meaning to watch a playthrough for the game before I actually watch the show. That's another thing that I need to do. Darn. I'll do it eventually. What's my Photoshop app called? It's called Photoshop. <laughs> Goodness, is there no way to lock this? I guess you could report them. We do stream requests sometime, uh, Sarah. Like, sometimes. We've, we've done anime ones before. I believe we're going to be doing a video game character one soon. Um, or, like, in the coming months, I guess. But yeah, we've, we've done it before. Oh, you just don't do it very frequently, no. We did a Pokemon one recently. That one was fun. Anyone gonna watch the cyberpunk anime made by Trigger? I think every Trigger anime becomes cyberpunk at some point. If Oz is still here, vouch for me, man. <laughs> you want to see me draw Sans Undertale? When I was 14, I had Sans Undertale memorized. I knew ev I knew how to draw every single every single Undertale character from by memory, dude. Metaton was my favorite. 
I don't remember how to draw them anymore, I don't think. I Maybe I could try and remember Sans, because Sans is easy enough, but like I don't think I could remember Metaton. But I used to have Metaton memorized. I used to have them all memorized. Lines. I need extra lines to... Okay, there's no outer line. <laughs> this is considered a lineless piece, but like obviously I need some lines to show up where things are happening, you know? DC or Marvel? I don't care. I'm just... I, just, <laughs> I care so little about superhero movies or films or comics. Best answer. <laughs> I'm like, that's totally fine if you're super into it. I just... I, I'm not going to open that can of worms. The Phantom scares me. And it spooks me. Hi. I don't work linelessly very much. I, f I find that, like, I tend to, to like, prefer line work. Because I'm just... I am a line artist. So it's, like, just the stuff that I love. But, like... Working linelessly is fun, though. It's very therapeutic in a weird way. It's kind of stressful, but it's, it's therapeutic in a weird way. Do dot highs have a purpose in drawing, so I have to practice on more advice by eye characters? Okay. Oh, dot highs are a preference. It's it's a style, right? It, there's no, it doesn't necessarily need a purpose. I am a hard proprietor for the idea that not all art needs meaning. Sometimes you just want to draw because you feel like it, man. <laughs> like that's just how it be. Um. But yeah, no, I mean, it's just, sometimes it's just for the style, right? Dot eyes are a very simple style. Sometimes people want that simple style. It's up to you. Have I watched Hilda? No. I was recommended Hilda a bunch, though. That's something that I need to watch, too. <laughs> There's so many things, it's just like, I need to watch that. One day. I will. Someday. How often do I do lineless art? Not very. Um, I love digital painting. That's something that I do as frequently as I can. Um, but even then, I don't do that very frequently. One of your college professors worked on Hilda. Nice! I had a couple of college professors who worked on Arthur, if you remember that show. Um, from ages ago um but yeah no i i, I swear every like art college prof has worked on, like for like animation or game design or something they've worked on a children's show at least once and they all hate it <laughs> like they all hate it afterwards dragons or unicorns dragons I love Arthur. So true. 100% my childhood, too. I remember when I learned that, I was like, you worked on Arthur? And he was like, yeah, no, I hate that show now. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. Like, I felt kind of bad, but also it was really cool that he worked on Arthur. I had a prop who worked on Watch Dogs as well. That was another thing. That was pretty cool. The, the game. Finish your first commission today. Nice! I love working on commissions. Commissions are always fun to work on, especially when the commissioner is just, like, generally really nice. I haven't had an experience with a bad commissioner, um, which is, like, I, I'm thankful for that. I hope I never do. But, um, yeah, no, I, I love, I love doing commissions. It's really fun. Max and Ruby was so my childhood, dude. I loved Max and Ruby as a kid. What do you think is the hardest thing to draw? Cars. I hate drawing vehicles. We'll say that, like, every time that I get asked what's your least favorite thing to draw, I'm like, it's vehicles. I hate drawing vehicles. So, like, cars, trains, that kind of thing. I actually don't really mind bicycles anymore, but, like, cars, trucks, any, like, mechanical vehicle that will get you from, any mechanical thing that will get you from point A to point B, I tend to despise drawing. I had to draw five cars recently, and I was really annoyed. <laughs> I don't hate drawing armor. I love drawing armor. Armor is just something that I struggle with. I don't hate it. I just struggle with it. Oops. 
kind of oh like regular emotes or text emotes if i have no choice then i'm too lazy to type i tend to be too lazy to actually type out like a text emote so i just use like the actual emoji but i use my if i have like the choice between using text emotes or emojis i tend to just use neither i tend to just like not do that i like to use emojis ironically i think that that's like my favorite thing to do um but I'm on Discord all the time, and I have Nitro, so I just have access to my own custom emotes all the time. <laughs> What's my favorite flower? I love the lotus. Am I gonna plan on making animated emotes? Probably not. I don't animate. Enjoy designing fighter spacecrafts. Nice. You know, I'm not much of a spacecraft person. Like, I don't really like drawing, like, uh, like spaceships as much. I love sci-fi. Like, I'm a really big sci-fi person. That's why I'm getting Pokemon Violet over Pokemon Scarlet. Um, but... Oh, anybody see the new Direct? Anybody see the new Pokemon Direct? Sheesh. I am so excited for this game, dude. It's gonna be so good. It's gonna be so fun. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be so awesome. Dude, I cried when I saw the new teacher. Jacques is so cute. He's <laughs> such a cute character. <laughs> I was like, oh no. You cute glasses, man. I can't. I'm just like, I'm like, no, one of my favorite design tropes. You can't do this, me, Nintendo. Um, I've already drawn him. He's he's I've already drawn him. Um <laughs> Yeah, Pokemon motorcycles, dude. I'm, it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to live my motorcycle dreams. This I'm getting Pokemon Violet. Like I just I like I prefer Professor Toro. Um, I like the legendary more. I think Moridon look like I think they both look pretty good. I just prefer like the the like more like electronic looking one. I'm just a big fan of like Cyberpunk and whatnot. The starter outfits, I think that they're kind of boring. I'm not a really big fan of them. I'm I was very like pleased to see that I saw like clothing shops. That's what's important to me. I was like, please don't tell me I'm stuck with this outfit. Please don't tell me I'm stuck with this outfit. <laughs> right on being a motorcycle walking on legs. I get why they did it. I understand. Like it's not really like they're not really wheels. It's more like it's just part of its body. Like I get it. But also, I think, like, I think Moridon's cooler. <laughs> I think they're both great designs. I think they're both, like, well done. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm very privy to Cyberpunk. So, I saw Cyberpunk Dragon, I'm like, bro, I'm in. <laughs> oh my god, the new Wooper! <laughs> Baby! I love, I love, it's like a, it's like a real axolotl. Like, they come in different colors. I have a friend who has an axolotl named Pickle. Is, is the color is he's a little bit greener, but like it's the same kind of same kind of vibe. <laughs> You're just going in blind, valid. I tend to not go in blind with Pokemon games. I tend to like to see like all the Pokemon that are available, just so then I know what I'm getting myself into. Because I like to play, I like to plan out my teams a little bit beforehand. Um, so you all know that I am having a team of, uh, six small lives and there will be nothing else. <laughs> the Bibli- Yes, I have seen the Biblically Accurate room, okay. I want one. Drawing on line paper make your work more unprofessional than on blank paper? Yes. That tends to be the, the general notion. Six Lechonks, true. Oh yeah, I play Pokemon for the story too. I tend to be more of like the I love to explore. I love for I love to experience the story. Um that's why like I think like of all the Pokemon games, black and white is my favorite one. Like that story was so heavy. It was so story heavy. It felt great. 
it was amazing. Um, and I've just never been as interested in other stories by comparison to it. <laughs> oh, goodness, my apologies. Um, like, I still play every Pokemon. Like, I haven't skipped a Pokemon, like, main series title. Thank you. Can Sunny take a human form? Yes. Um, they have, like, a... How, how I've described Sunny's human form is very much, like... It's very much like a like an uncanny valley kind of person. Like they can't really they're it's like the one form that they can't really do very well is like a legitimate looking person. So whenever they try and take on the form of a person, there's just something that's like slightly off. It doesn't really feel like a person. It's just that you get like that fight or flight when you look at them. Hollow Knight is a great game, yeah. Sunny becomes an old man. Sunny can become anything. What's my favorite Switch game when it comes to the, the art or the animation? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I played Rhyme a while ago. That's the first one that comes to my head. The beautiful, beautiful style. Um... Breath of the Wild is really good. Oh, Kirby and the Forgotten Lands. How could I forget? That game looks gorgeous. I remember playing Kirby and the Forgotten Lands and like feeling like crying. I was like, my gosh. My boy. My boy in full HD, bro. Sunny's bird form? Yeah, I have it. Here. Let me let me let me show you. I have like a I have a few different forms that I've like designed for Sunny. I have it like. Like, there's a few that I've properly designed, but I kind of just draw whatever most of the time. Um, sunny concepts, there we go. Sunny can become, yeah, period. So Sunny has, like, this little tiny bird form that looks like this. It sits on Sunny's, or Kingsley's shoulder sometimes. Like, they have little familiar forms. So they have, like, a bunch of these, like, smaller familiar forms then there's the larger more monstrous ones this is like this set here is like more for transportation it's the one that i draw most of the time but yeah they have like this set of like smaller forms all of these like i didn't color them in but it's like as if you were looking at like a vanta black <laughs> screen like it's like it's very much like like it's like kind of tough to look at Account for him. Yeah, it's got eight legs, six legs. Or eight legs, six legs, one or the other. Sunny looks awesome. Thank you. I'm a really big fan of drawing Sunny. I, I love designing Sunny. I was like, what? Like, Sunny is like my my outlet when I'm like, I need to draw an Eldritch monster right now. I'm like, all right, I'm drawing Sunny again. <laughs> Do I know the game Stay or Stray? Because I finished Stray, but if there's one called Stay, then I don't know it. This live? Yes. Stray. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played Stray. I finished it. Great game. I cried when I saw that one, too. I was like, it's so pretty. I was playing it on call with a bunch of friends. I finished it on call as well. We got to the ending and we, like I'm no spoilers for the ending. I'm not gonna spoil it. Um, but we got to the ending and we were like, <laughs> it's just crying. <laughs> How long does it take me to finalize a character design? If I am working for somebody else, we go through a few, through a few passes. Um, so if I'm doing it with somebody else, then I do a few passes and then we work together to complete it. Um, if I'm doing it for myself, I tend to do one or two passes, um, just because then it's like, I kind of know what I want. Or it's like, if I, if I'm not satisfied with an area, I adjust it on the fly. So it's like, I adjust while I illustrate. But it might take, see, usually sometimes I just have a vision and I'm like, I need to make this character look like this immediately. Cliff was very much that kind. Like, I, I designed him, like, right on the spot. Corn took a couple of passes. Kingsley I did right on the spot. Sunny took a couple of passes. But it's very much, like, sometimes I'll think of it, sometimes I won't. How do I read the stream and draw so well? I have 
uh, it in a, I have two monitors, so I can check back and forth constantly. Do I know the game a hat in time? I do. I just never played it. <laughs> Sunny, I don't always tend to draw with eyes. Cause I don't wanna I don't wanna be that guy and give Sunny like red eyes, because it's like it's really boring. You know what? I'll do gray eyes. Why not? Let's go with the gray. Let's go with like a yeah. Kind of like a cold. Hard to see. Have I played Sonic Colors? No. <laughs> I've actually never played a Sonic game. I've watched a lot of playthroughs, as in I just watch Game Grumps play it a lot, but like I've never actually played a Sonic game myself. I can't tell if this is cute or horrifying. I like to call my monsters creepy cute. Like there's something cute about them, but they are all generally kind of terrifying. Do I play Animal Crossing? I have 600 hours logged into Animal Crossing. <laughs> I was obsessed with it when it first came out. You must understand, I got the whole studio into Animal Crossing. Will I draw the legendaries from Pokemon at Alive? Maybe, if we do another Pokemon stream. We just did one, so I don't think we'll do one anytime soon again. Maybe we'll get Iggy and Vanessa to do it at some point. I mean, there is going to probably be like a, a request stream coming up. <laughs> That's a month of Animal Crossing. Yeah. I played minimum like two hours every single day. Like it came out and then I played for like minimum two hours every day. How many layers do I typically use when drawing one person? In my normal, in my normal layout, it's usually about three, three to four layers. Currently, I'm using a single layer for both. <laughs> so I have one layer for Sunny, one layer for Kingsley. Because this is taking me a lot longer, but also this is just how my layouts go with this kind of style. How long have I been drawing for? I answered this earlier. I am... I've been drawing for basically my whole life. Basically my whole life. So approximately 21 years. <laughs> have I ever drawn an ink? Um, look at the live streams from like two weeks ago. <laughs> What's Sunny's original form? That's the funny thing. Is that Sunny... Sunny is a character where... Um, their whole gimmick is that nobody really knows what they look like. Like, they take on every form, but you just can't. Because they're like this eldritch deity, you can't know what they actually look like. So even Kingsley doesn't know what Sunny looks like. Because um, if he did, then he would not still be alive. <laughs> so nobody really knows what Sunny looks like, but Sunny has a bunch of different forms that they can take. I, I tend to watch other people draw to get, like, um, inspiration if I want to try, like, different styles out or if I want to get new techniques. Like, I love watching speed paints. That tends to be what I do. It's funny that I've become that now. <laughs> I just imagine that as, like, a married couple argument. Sunny and Kingsley have been married for about six years. Um, they met when Kingsley was about 22. Um... And then got married when he was, um, like, they slowly fell in love over the course of that. And then they f got married when he was about 25. And in the current story, he's, uh, he's 31. So it's been about six years. <laughs> Have I ever thought about illustrating a book? Um, I have a webtoon. I would love to do a long-form 
comic again. Like, I just, I haven't really had the, the inspiration for Grayson as much. But I'd love to do a long-form comic again. I've been actually thinking about doing one about Sonny and Kingsley. Like, proper, like, long-form comic about them. So I think that'd be kind of fun. Just, like, how they met and whatnot. What am I drawing? This is my D&D &D warlock and his patron. The patron is named Sunny, and my warlock is named Kingsley, and they are a married couple. <laughs> How did Sunny and Kingsley fall in love? It was very much like it... Um, so how they met was, you know like how you play, what's it called? Like, you play Bloody Mary. Like, it was, like, really, like, popular, like, rituals, quote-unquote. Where you're like, oh, I'm gonna summon this demon, right? So he decided to do it with his friends. They were like, let's do, like, this popular ritual. Um, to, like, summon this, this deity. And, like, it's a really popular ritual that actually does work. It's just that the deity decides not to answer most of the time. Like, it can choose not to show up. Um, but Sunny got kind of annoyed by keep like kept on being called by all these kids and eventually Sonny's like you know what I'm just gonna show up to this one why not just so I can mess with these kids and Sonny shows up and the others leave but Kingsley's still there and Sonny's like why are you like weren't you supposed to like aren't you like scared of me and Sonny's like and Kingsley's like I mean I was I, was, I summoned you like that's kind of what I was trying to do and then Sonny leaves and then it's just kind of like a like Kingsley keeps on summoning Sonny back and then eventually Sunny kind of gets used to Kingsley, and they slowly fall in love over the course of that. Yeah, basically Kingsley unknowingly summoned his spouse out of boredom. Yep, basically. And it was initially like a thing where like Sunny wanted nothing to do with Kingsley, and then over time like they started hanging out more, and Kingsley kind of showed Sunny because Sunny is like an eldritch deity that's been alive for longer than Kingsley can comprehend. And like, and it's like Sunny already knows everything, but Kingsley teaches them to stop and smell the roses, basically. Why oh, does he have black fingernails? So that was a thing where it was like I gave him black fingernails because Sunny has uh, dark fingernails, and it's like when when uh, Kingsley became. Um, or when Sunny became Kingsley's patron, that's what um, Kingsley got, was both the ring and, like, his nails turned black like theirs. So, like, those black nails were permanent. Like, you can't get rid of them. <laughs> hey, honey, how was your day? Sunny ascends, basically. Sunny can talk. Sunny can speak just fine. Hi, Azim! <laughs> Welcome in, Bessie. What does Sunny sound like? Sunny, how I describe Sunny to my friends, is like if you thought of every, like the smoothest talkers in the world. I'm good, thank you. How are you? Um, if you thought of like the smoothest talkers in the world, male and female, everything in between, and just kind of layered them on top of each other. That's what I imagine Sunny is. Like, the, just the smoothest voice, but like a bunch of them on top of each other. Does the form you're drawing have a mouth? Not quite. It's kind of just, it opens up here. Sunny have a gender? Sunny is anything and nothing at the exact same time. So whatever pronouns you choose for Sunny, it does not matter. Some of my friends use she, her. I tend to use they, them. It literally doesn't matter. <laughs> Has anyone ever asked about the backstory of one of your brand new hot off the oven OCs and your brain needs to scramble to come up with something that sounds decent and logical? I've done that all the time. <laughs> Improv, besties. How many OCs do I have? I have no clue. I have so many, so many characters. Like, even before I got into D&D, like, I've, I've just always been, like, a character creator. So I've just got characters for days. 
<laughs> in my head, Sunny sounds like the Angel Sea Lady, the Legend of Sinbad. I have no characters to compare to Sunny. Like, it's like, it, it, like, I would have to, like, manipulate, like, Sunny's voice. It's like if you took, like, like, 500 of the smoothest talkers in the world and gave them the same incantation, the same, like, way that they spoke and just layered them on top of each other. That's basically how I, that's how Sunny sounds. It's just like a bunch of voices on top of each other. Sunny's a nice name. Yeah, Sunny's not their real name. Sunny is just the name that Kingsley gave them because, like, he was like, I don't really want to pronounce your Eldritch name. He's like, why don't we just, like, come up with a name that's, like, nice for you? And Sunny at first was like, absolutely not. And then they eventually started to, to like the name Sunny. There's a TikTok I saw once that was like the <laughs> it's like this guy and he's like he makes these like short he made these like short songs about like a character who like really doesn't want to fall in love with another character but eventually does and gets like really annoyed by it and that's basically how it's what Sunny is. They're very sweet now. They're very like sweet and nice to each other, but it wasn't always like that. How long did it take to create your D&D characters? Kingsley, I carried it on the spot. Corn took a long time, because Corn I had to kind of think about. There's so much with Corn now, too, but like I can't talk about it because uh Corn I actually play as. And I don't I don't wanna send any spoilers out into the ether, you know. What's Sunny's actual name? That's the meme. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't come up with it yet. I'll have, like, I'm supposed- I need to come up with a name that, like, Sunny uses, um, like, for mortals. Like, there needs to be a, a name where, like, people know that this is that god or this is that deity. Um, like, there needs to be a name that the mortals use, and then there needs to be a name that mortals don't know. And that's, like, the, the true name or whatever, and that's the one that I'm just not gonna write, because I think it'd be funnier if just absolutely nobody knew it. Like, there's no way for you to know it. Do I watch? Yes, I have seen Arcane. Arcane was great. Arcane was a great show. Do I do comics? Yeah. I'm a comic illustrator. Probably can't be pronounced by humans. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, the, the true name is, like, one that's, like, no human can pronounce it. No human can know it. That kind of thing. Like, if you know the name, then your ears will start bleeding or whatever. It's just, like, some crazy name that, like, you can't know. Is it hard to choose colors for every OC that you make? Not really. I find that, like, I I tend to, like, find a thing that I'm very much, like, um, what's it called? I tend to find, like, a theme or a palette that I really want, and then I kind of stick with that, and then eventually I just, like, like, I have another character, I have another D&D character named Rai. They're, like, um, they're a water ganasi, uh, artificer. And Rai, I wanted to be very much like a Splatoon character. I wanted like this, mo this like, oceany kind of character. Let me let me grab Rai. Rai, I really wanted like this. I initially because I wanted to base them off of a flashlight fish, initially, because I was like, I'm like, okay, I see all these water ganasi, and I'm like, I want something interesting and new. So I was like, I was like, how about I base this off of like a funkier kind of water ganasi, or this a funkier character? And I was like, okay, I'll just go with this. Um. Oh shoot, it's 549. <laughs> I'm almost done, it's okay. Um, and Rai was a really fun design to work with. I had a lot of fun designing them. Um, I'm really excited to play as them too. I'm going to be playing them live. There is going to be a live stream where I actually play as them. Um, so you'll get to see me play D&D. Haha, -ha, if you ever tune into that, I guess. Um, but... Yeah, so that's... Like, I, I, don't find, I, I don't find it difficult. If I'm struggling, then I usually get second opinions. Um... More often than not, I'm generally okay. Do I have a persona? You're looking at her in the bottom right corner. <laughs> Gremlin Jessie is just what I've adopted over the years.
artwork causes time dilation for real. I've also been chatting. I really, I really love talking about my characters. It's fun to get a bunch of questions about them. <laughs> so I guess it's just because I'm like drawing things lean sunny right now and you like people popping in like what am I looking at? <laughs> Will I do a face reveal? It's not hard to find it. We did a we did an on cam stream a bit ago, and we have a there's a video. Um, I, there's no face reveal. But you've seen my face before. <laughs> there are like there's videos on the channel that have my face in it. There's one that was like a an art portfolio interview where I talked about my portfolio into university. That one has my face in it. We did a an on cam stream for what's it called? For like how I learned to draw. It's like my the history of my artwork. Like I did that one on cam. It's not hard to find my face. It's, it's on the channel. <laughs> how do you make deities and ethereal looking gods? I can never get it right and I need tips. Generally more ethereal looking characters. You're going to want to stick with very light palettes. Um, very, very light. Very... Um, very warm palettes. You can have like hints of coal in there, but you want them to stay generally like yellow and white, cream, that kind of general thing. You want to use a lot more simple shapes. You don't want to make it too intense. Simplicity tends to make things look a little bit more ethereal, a little bit more sweet, or more dulcet is the best word I could use for it. Um, like if you think about a lot of like more ethereal kinds of like characters or um or designs and whatnot they tend to have very simplistic shapes and whatnot because if you think about like like drawn angels versus biblically accurate angels like you can kind of you can kind of get the difference between that you know oh no it's like this this is why i should keep the guidelines open but I don't do that, so... What's my favorite food? Eggs Benedict. Will I draw in Clip Studio P next week? I will be. Do I know Deltarune? Yes, I've played the first chapter. I didn't finish- I didn't get to play the second one, though. I haven't been, had the time. How many OCs do I have? I- I answered this question! <laughs> I- from you! I said I don't know. <laughs> I can't count them. Do I know Zelda? I love Legend of Zelda. I've played so- I play- I love Legend of Zelda. <laughs> Wind Waker is my favorite. I stand by that. I literally don't care. Wind Waker is the best one. Do I watch Critical Role? I don't actually. My best friend loves Critical Role. Um, I don't actually watch it. I know I should. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, let's speed this up just a slight. I watch it with your best friend, yes. K K and my best friend both watch it. Do I watch My Little Pony? I was I loved My Little Pony when I was very, very young. I loved I was like super obsessed with it when I was like five or six. Um and then I got out of it. And then I started watching Friendship is Magic when I was 12. <laughs> and I watched three seasons in three days. Um, and then I never watched it again. Because <laughs> that was all that was out at the time. And then I just never got back into it. Also, the My Little Pony fandom scares me. So. I am. I don't really want to. I don't really want to interact. Not going to lie. <laughs> I am too scared. How long have I been a teacher? Three years. I've been teaching for approximately three years. I started when I was in high school. Um, and I've been teaching since. Uh, 
How did I start my art journey? I have technically been in the industry since I was about 14. I've been doing commission work since I was about 14. Um, but like most, most, most art careers, like you get, it's, it's who you know, right? It's like your connections are everything. So like for me, like I grew up in an art family, so I had connections really early, right? I was very, very fortunate in that regard, you know? Um, Everybody does a little bit differently, though. It's Casey's right, but it, oh shoot, it's the wrong. This is the wrong hand. Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I didn't even realize. I was like, wait, what do you mean? I'm like, oh yeah, no, this is the wrong hand. Okay, it should be on his left. It should be on this one, so his finger isn't even showing up there. That's fine. I have a different illustration where they're holding hands like this, and it's like they're it's both their left hands. Any artists that inspired my art style? There's a lot. I have a lot of artists. Like, my, my art style is a mishmash of a bunch of things. When I was younger, I was really, really inspired by Stephen McGowan. Like, that's the... Red Bean Violin is the, the username. Um, but, like, I, I, I loved that style when I was younger. Like that's, That was, like, my main inspiration when I was a lot younger. Um, now it's just kind of a mishmash of a bunch of people. I couldn't really name one. I also wouldn't call my art style very unique. I've seen a lot of people work, like with my normal art style, I see a lot of people work in that kind of semi-realistic kind of look. It's not a not a very new thing. How did kings look at Sunny at their wedding? So they didn't have a natural wedding. Um, I still have to write that out. I don't really have an answer for you. I like I do, but I, I don't want to. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> I have to write it out because I can't really do it off the top of my head right now. Who's my favorite OC? I can't. I literally can't pick that. Like that's not something I can do. <laughs> I love all my characters. I can't choose between my children. How did Kingsley and Sonny get married? Their wed their um their warlock pact is how they got married. So like when Kingsley became it wasn't necessarily an actual marriage. What happened was like they like Sonny became um Kingsley's patron. And that's like that's how they got quote unquote married. Cause with the pact, uh Kingsley got a ring. And that was like how that whole thing happened. <laughs> Like his uh, his warlock pact is bound by a ring. It's like a golden wedding band, and uh, Sunny has a matching one. Love your content. Just subscribe. Do you have any tips for anatomy study? Science is your best friend. When I say study, I do literally mean like textbook study. <laughs> also practice, of course. Start getting used to your muscle names. Figure out where they go if you want more advanced anatomy. I'm very scientific with my uh, with my anatomy, so it's like I'm very I'm a very big fan of that kind of that kind of stuff. Can Kingsley take off his ring? Yeah, yeah, he can take it off. It's not like it's like bound to him. <laughs> the only thing that he can't take off are the black nails. Like, those are, like, permanent, permanent. Have I watched the animatic ship in a bottle? I have not. And if I have, then I don't remember that it- I don't remember its name. <laughs> I've seen a lot of animatics. Like, you might show it to me and I'm like, oh yeah, I have seen this. And that's just, I just didn't remember that it existed. Or I just didn't know its name. Ooh. I'm just gonna do some minor edits. Oops. 
Nope, that's not what I wanted. I wanted this. Yes. Turn off contiguous. Okay, we're getting close. We're basically at 6, 6 p.m. Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me a minute. We're almost done here. Yeah, we're almost done here. I just gotta clean this up a little bit more. I want to add more stuff to this, and then we're we're basically done after that. Sorry, if my, I'm like, no, don't mind me as I, uh, as I try and figure everything out real quick. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a big fan of like the the like I need I need I'm a very cute writer. I'm not a big fan of like the I mean I like angst, but I'm like I need I need my I need my, my cute content, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh I actually like it without the overlay. Okay. Okay, there's a section I'm getting bothered with, but it's I'll I'll fix it after screen after stream. Um, all right, thank you all <laughs> so much for joining. Hopefully, this is entertaining to you. Um, I had a lot of fun working on this one. This is a very this is a very fun piece to work on. I, I'll probably do some extra edits after stream, um, because there are some sections that I'm like I kind of want to fix them. Um, but it's it's nothing crazy. It's mostly just fixing contrast. Um. But yes, thank you all so much for joining. Um, if you don't know too much about the studio, don't know too much about us, we're not just a YouTube channel, we're also an art studio. Make sure you check out the classes we offer, wingcanvas.com. You're going to have to check us out over there. Um, this piece that you see in front of you, this one right here, will be available on the Discord as a JPEG. So join the Discord. Come join us. Come talk to me. Come talk to some of the other people. Um, we will all be talking to one another over there but if you'd like my working files with my layers you're gonna have to join our patreon yeah you could also be a youtube member youtube members also get working files um so be sure to join us on either of those and you get exclusive stuff by joining on both of them um next week next week what we are going to be doing is um shoot Oh, it's art tips. It's art tips. We're going to be talking about art tips. We're going to be talking about my favorite art tips that I wish I knew. Um, I think that's it, right? Something like that. Um, but yes, that's what we are going to be doing next week. So be sure to join us here. Same place, same time. Um, yes. Thanks so much for joining. I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir. Bye-bye. <laughs>